Hello. In this video we're going to be reviewing the steps taken to upgrade uh, the hard drive in this Toshiba C55-B5353. Um, this laptop features an Intel Pentium processor. Uh, performance isn't bad for what it's going to be used for, however, uh, switching it over to using a uh, solid state hard drive is going to increase its performance substantially. Um, at this point, I have uh, run a drive clone software. Uh, I used a Cronus True Image 2015. And what that has done is duplicated the image on the hard drive, the stock image, uh, onto my aftermarket hard drive. Uh, this was accomplished using a SATA to USB adapter kit. Um, so as you see here, this is your aftermarket hard drive. We've got the AC adapter that's powering it, and then this is going uh, SATA uh, through this adapter to USB. Um, these USB kits are pretty common. You can pick them up at most computer places. Uh, not a big deal to hook up. Um, again, I already ran the duplication software, and uh, I currently have an active image. So next step is going to be to physically replace the uh, stock hard drive with my aftermarket guy. Hardware rundown. Uh, again, this is a Toshiba Satellite C55B5353. It was a holiday purchase. Uh, pretty good performance. It has the Intel Pentium chip. Not an i-series, but again, it's not a Celeron. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty solid performer once I do the hard drive upgrade on this. Currently, it has a 500 gigabyte, 5400 RPM uh, platter drive. 5400 RPM is pretty popular for most uh, classic style notebooks. They are lower uh, RPMs. This is a power saving feature. That also means that it, since it's spinning slower, you're getting data slower. Um, I think 5400 RPM is terrible. So I'm really excited that uh, solid states are down to a price point where they're very affordable. 500 gigs can be swapped out in this case for a silicone power S60. This is a 120 gigabyte hard drive. Um, it's a thinner form factor. Uh, this is the 7 millimeter, so it's Ultrabook compatible. Uh, this guy, as of late December 2014, uh, cost me about 50 or 55 dollars. Super cheap. Um, quick note: most people, I think, 120 gigabytes will do them fine unless you're downloading tons of music or a lot of high-def videos. Um, for web browsing, office work, that kind of stuff, 120 gigs is more than enough. And honestly, if uh, the person this is going to max is that out, I'm sure by the time that rolls around, the 500 gigabytes will probably be considerably cheaper. Um, this guy, I will go ahead and point out, did not come up with uh, any drive transfer software. Some of them uh, crucial. I know it comes with a Cronus TrueDisk, um, the Samsung solid states, which are highly lauded, uh, come with Magician software, and I believe some sort of Norton um, Ghost, which is another very popular software you can use for cloning things. Cloning was accomplished again with the USB 2 SATA to IDE cable. Uh, you can find these all over the place. I don't know if they're up to USB 3 with these yet. Uh, if they are, I'd say pick up a USB 3. It'll increase your transfer time considerably. Um, this laptop I know does have the USB 3 port on it. I would say for the 50 gigabytes that I transferred, it probably took it maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Nothing too terrible. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. So right now what we're looking at is the bottom of the laptop. Here's the top. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've removed the screws. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, used a little Phillips head screwdriver to get those out of there. Uh, the first thing you're going to go ahead and notice is it is not plugged in. Uh, these two screws at the bottom are what held in the battery, which I have now removed. Um, I was actually pretty surprised that these were held in by screws. Usually it's just quick release clips, so I don't know if the industry is switching over to that or 
that's just Toshiba cutting corners or what. But before we go any further with anything, make sure you've got the battery out of there. Ground yourself on a piece of metal so you don't, you know, discharge any static. And uh, we'll go from there. Real quick, again, the battery's facing my stomach right now. This screw in here uh, towards the bottom right-hand corner is a real jerk and does not want to come out. So I'm not sure if that's going to fully pull out or if uh, that's one of those situations where you can't get that screw fully out until the bottom cover is removed. All right, so removing the bottom cover assembly was a little tricky. Uh, I've flipped the unit upside down. You'll see the label is now inverted. Up here is that battery compartment area. Um, I took a flathead screwdriver. I came up near this hinge assembly um, and pried that open and slowly uh, ran my fingers down along the seam pulling the unit apart. You'll hear a couple pops as uh, um, pegs pull out. This screw here was the one I was having an issue with. Uh, that does actually fully remove. When you pull that out, I'm not sure if just mine has a weird cut of plastic or not, but the screw came up with it. And that screw is loose, so carefully don't lose it. Uh, as a quick tip, I, uh, I like use a cup or something to hold all your screws. These little case screws get lost very easily, and that's no fun. Also go ahead and point out real quick that, uh, again, this is the front of the unit. This screw location here, that actually pins down your hard drive. So again, starting here, I pull it off. When you do it, you're going to hear some pops and snaps. Go slow. Don't rip anything. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up with uh, broken pegs. Here you can see the bottom of the case. And you got little plastic clips around along the side. These are all pretty flimsy and they'll break easily. So go easy and be nice. Here is the exposed unit. Uh, pretty simple setup. Uh, go ahead and note that you only have one RAM up slot on that, which is kind of stingy. I doubt there's anything under the keyboard with this guy. Uh, here's what we're after, though. The hard drive. Um, again, the case. The screw here is going to be the screw that pins your hard drive into place. That's what that is here. Uh, you've got a rubber jacket um, surrounding it that's probably for a shock absorption. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that. You'll see there are the little tabs here. You can just pull those straight up. They'll come out of their slots. I'm going to set the camera down here for a minute. We'll pick back up. All right, so we're pulling up on this. You'll see you got a little bit of flex. Go easy with this stuff. Your connector here uh, only has so much leeway, and if you pull too hard, you're going to snap that and be uh, bad news bears real quick. So we're picking that up. Uh, this tab here along the bottom, you should be able to give that a little tug. I like to work it back and forth, pop that guy out, and voila. That looks like uh, standard SATA, um, which is the connection on this. Sometimes you'll see adapter caddies. That is not the case with this guy, so we're going to go ahead and pull this out of the blue jacket and swap it out for the solid state. Okay, so yeah, this sloughed off really easy. Here's the bottom of the original drive. Uh, the replacement drive is this guy here. Those are going to line up fine, wonderful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zap these two screws out so I can take whatever this padding is and uh, transfer it over to the new drive. This is pretty awful. Uh, shame on you, Toshiba. I don't know why you're using an adhesive nonsense like this. This thing is one big sticker. Uh, the only reason I'm bothering to peel it off is, again, I want that anchor point on there. And uh, I'm quickly losing my patience with this, so... Uh... Use both hands, go slow, and uh, if you tear it all up and it looks like junk, it's probably not too big of a deal. And there we have it. Plenty of residue on there, so that looks absolutely terrible. And now I'm going to go ahead and ruin my nice brand new drive with uh, some nice Toshiba stickers. I don't know who is behind this, but thank you for being stupid. And there you go. Nice and wrinkled and ghetto. 
great job, go me. Uh, we've kept the blue um, drive caddy in the same place. Again, we're going to be tucking these uh, cable or uh, grommets back in there. Uh, go ahead and flip it so your drive is up. You are lining up these connector pins uh, with that adapter slot there. Alright, so jacket's on there. Start uh, in at an angle, move it forward slowly. Uh, I'm now seeing that a tripod is very necessary for doing YouTube videos where you're working with your hands, obviously. Alright, be careful when you're doing this. You push too hard and you can damage the pins. Make sure that jacket's tucked all the way underneath there. Again, this is that 7mm uh, ultra slim style, so I'm going to have a little bit of wiggle room in there, which again was why I was really sure to make sure I got that sticker on. But uh, I like to put finger here, push from the back. You'll hear a little bit of a, a noise as it slides into place, gets snug. Turn these guys sideways. And push down to lock that back into place. This will function as a uh, bumper to make sure that the drive stays secure uh, in the connection. And then I'm going to go ahead and zap uh, that screw will zap in when I put the cover back on top of it. Go ahead and gently push the corners. You'll feel the plastic snap back into place. Uh, check along the bottom here. You've got some ports and stuff. Um, doesn't look like there's anything pushing out past the plastic. Sometimes you'll have USB ports. Um, thin metal will hang up over the case, but I'm giving a little press here and there, snapping it all back in before I start dropping the screws in. All right, it feels pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take my collection of screws, put them all home. Uh, when you're tightening screws in, go easy. You turn too tight, you're gonna crack the plastic, uh, and that's no good, so see you in a minute. All right, again, remember, uh, you need to slide that battery in before you start putting the screws in, or at least these two screws, because those two screws are what let the battery go and if you put them in before the battery is in you're not going to be able to fit your battery back in there. Um, on further consideration this uh, lower that sticker thing I was dealing with probably completely unnecessary. Um, all it's done is left me with a perfectly good 500 gigabyte uh, drive that's now covered in sticker residue um, so I don't know if I would bother switching that sticker over again but all the screws went in alright uh, ran my fingers around the corner, made sure everything was clicked and good. Oh, missed a little part there. All right. So now we're going to go and do the moment of truth. Generally, my rule of thumb is uh, don't put everything back together until you've power tested it. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to work the first time. So far, hmm. Well, I've got an error message here um, saying that the battery is low. Press enter to set the date and time. Not sure what happened there. Maybe I bumped the uh, battery on the bottom. Um, you've got a little watch battery on laptops. That's what, and desktops for that matter. That's what keeps your settings when you're doing. Uh, basically when the computer loses power so uh, I'm gonna skip over that for right now I'll let Windows worry about setting that and we're going to exit save and exit as a F10 save changes yes mm -hmm. 
Sorry for all the blurriness and the shaky cam. This is my first YouTube video. It's a pretty impulsive uh, decision. So here we go. We've got the start screen. Um, it looks like uh, the pictures are that should be there. Um, it's about an hour off. Uh, it should be 11.19, so that would be from the battery hiccup. But if I've got this screen here, that means that the uh, transfer operation uh, went correctly and that the installation was successful. So now I've got a drastically updated notebook. Uh, the solid state's going to put quite a bit of performance edge on that. Let's go ahead real quick and just look at the... Uh, uh, darn it. Oop. Do a reset here. Your boot up time is pretty insane with solid state, so. And Windows 8 overall seems to have a much faster boot up due to the UFI BIOS. There you go. Boom. That fast. Crazy. So uh, there it is. Uh, hopefully that'll help you guys out. I made the post because I didn't see anything uh, actually showing uh, bottom case removals for the C55, B53, B50, I'm sorry, B53, 53, so good luck. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put a, in the comments and I'll help you out as best I can.